Hey, what's up, guys? How are you doing? Today, we're going to see some security terminology. I'm going to define some key security terms that you need to know. And these apply to all types of security, physical security, information security, or cybersecurity. And I'm going to tell you the correlation between these different terms. So the different terms we're going to define today are vulnerability, threat, risk, attack, intrusion. And I'm going to finally give you a correlation between these different terms. This video is one of the many lessons that I'm creating on kbtrans.com, the website, about the Cisco CCNA 200 301. So it's a whole course or training that is going to help you study, take, and pass the CCNA exam, which is very helpful in the field. It can help you start or boost your career in the tech industry. So if you want to go from zero to engineer, go on kbtrans.com, check out the course on CCNA 200 301. So the first term we're going to define is vulnerability. A vulnerability is a weakness in your system. When your information system is built, it's supposed to be strong and withstand all kind of attacks from the outside or even from the inside. But sometimes that is not the case. You may have some holes in your system. So your vulnerabilities can come from design errors, from some misconfigurations. You might have a good firewall, an expensive firewall, but if you don't configure it well, you will still be vulnerable or from some outdated softwares that you might have inside your system. So that's why it's very important to conduct some vulnerability assessment and make sure that you have less and less of them. I can tell you that it's kind of hard to have zero vulnerability, mostly if you have a lot of services that you're running, but you need to make sure that you run these assessments all the time and you are aware of how good your security is by using scanning software, manual reviews, or by doing some penetration testing. That's why pen testers are in need today because it's really important for you to try to penetrate inside your own network or your own system to see what kind of vulnerability you have and then you can fix them or try to reduce those vulnerabilities by installing updates, by always reviewing and making sure you have good configuration and by also monitoring your system to make sure that you don't have any new vulnerabilities. That will make your information system strong and good. Some of the vulnerabilities can also be from the inside, just like I said, your employees or your colleagues can also be a vulnerability in your system. So that's why it's also good. We're going to talk about it. It's good to have um, user awareness and make sure that all users are aware of those security threats as we're going to see. So I talked about threat. What is a threat? A threat is any potential danger to your information system or to your network. And many threats exist out there. It's up to you to make sure that you know what are the threats and you have less vulnerability so that you are not victim of an attack. And we're going to see what is an attack. So the threats are from various sources. It can be from hackers, from malware, or even insider threats. Just like I said, the users can also be a threat or it can also be a natural disaster. We talked about physical security. Sometimes nature can also be a threat to your information system. So you need to identify all the threats out there, making sure that you are aware of them so you can reduce or mitigate the risk to your system. And many cybersecurity companies today will make sure that you have at your disposal a database of all the threats that exist. Cisco, Fortinet, or all those big companies, they are out there trying to protect you by making sure they know what are the new threats that are emerging in the field and making you aware of it so that you can take all the measures or they take all the measures for you so that you are protected. So next we're going to talk about risk. What is a risk? A risk is a probability or a potential impact of a threat that exists out there to use some of your vulnerabilities to create damage in your information system. Every time as a security professional, you need to make sure that you know how much risk is existing for your organization and that will help you protect yourself even more. So this process will help you identify the threat the vulnerabilities, and also what would be the impact of a security incident inside your system. You need to be prepared. You need to be ready in case you have an attack. And you also need to make sure that you are able to reduce the likelihood or the impact of any security incident by doing risk mitigations or by implementing some risk mitigation strategies. So some of the strategies that you can use for risk mitigation include implementing security controls, you should patch your vulnerabilities and you should also have an incident response plan in case you are attacked or in case you fall victim of some of the threats that exist out there. You should be able to deal with it and reduce the impact of those security threats. So next we're going to define what is an attack. An attack is when an entity, it might be an individual, it might be a group of people or even a malicious software, 
is trying to get or create damage in your system and it's actively trying to do it. So when you are being attacked, those entities from the outside, sometimes from the inside as well, are trying to use some of your vulnerabilities to get access to your information system, to either steal your information or just to deny you of the service. That's what I'm saying here that some of the vectors of the attacks are phishing, where you receive some fake emails that can lead you to a fake website where information can be stolen or where a malicious virus can be pushed to your system. We also have malwares and denial of service or DOS. Uh, mostly today, what is used is DDoS or um, distributed denial of service. And again, the goal can be to steal the data, to cause disruption, or to gain unauthorized access to some sensitive information. You are a bank, for example, you have a lot of information about your client, financial information or even personal information. That information is gold for someone out there. If they want to have access to it, they are available to attack you and see if you have any vulnerabilities so they can get access. So you need to prevent and detect cyber attacks by taking some technical measures like using firewalls. IDS or IPS. IDS stands for Intrusion Detection System or IPS, which is Intrusion Prevention System. And you also need to do a lot of user awareness trainings because as I told you, some of your vulnerabilities are the users inside your network. So you need to make sure that your users are aware of all the security threats out there and they're able to protect themselves as well as your system. This was one of my responsibilities in an old job where I need to make sure that, I mean, I was um, an information security officer or ISO and I had to create trainings for the users and make sure that everybody in the company understands the security risk so that they are able to face them efficiently if they receive a phishing email for example they should not open the attached file or whatever and making sure that all the employees have the right access to the system you don't want to give too much permission to anybody so that's something that you need to do to prevent or to mitigate some of the attacks that can happen to your organization next I'm going to talk about intrusion and intrusion is when an unauthorized entity like a hacker, a group of hackers, or even a software accesses your information system. So this can lead to data breaches, information system disruption, or even unauthorized access to sensitive information. So you want to make sure that you are detecting intrusions when they happen by implementing systems like IDS that I mentioned before. Intrusion detection systems can help you monitor and analyze the traffic of your network for signs of malicious activity. So if there is anything malicious happening on a network, if there is an intrusion, the IDS will send you a notification, an email or some kind of alert so that as a professional, you can come and take all the appropriate measures to make sure that the threat is contained. So the IDS will detect and send you a notification. We also have IPS or intrusion prevention systems. The IPS will detect the intrusion. We also automatically block it or stop it from creating damages to your system. So, and that's the job of the IPS. I'm going to end by giving you the correlation between these different terms or these different words. So we finished with intrusion. Intrusion is actually when an attack has been successful and now the entity, the hacker or group of hackers or the malicious software is now inside your network. So the attack led to the intrusion. And when you have an intrusion, just like I said, you can use the IDS to detect and send an alert, or you can use the IPS to block the, the intrusion itself. So an attack is when the entity is now deliberately trying to get into your system, and they're doing that by trying to use some of your vulnerabilities. And before an attack happens, it's first a threat. And you should be aware of all the threats that exist against your company or your organization, that will help you evaluate the level of risk that you are exposed to as a company or as an organization. So that's how all these terms um, kind of go together. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like the lesson, like it on YouTube and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of my future videos. And make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And again, this is part of the CCNA course available on kbtrends.com. So check out the course. It goes from zero to engineer and will help you be a good engineer, study, pass, and get your CCNA certificate. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.